Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. Um, this is mostly a gun and uh, shot channel, more than a uh, knife channel. But uh, I was doing some research and I'm going to put together a nice video about the Philippines. And uh, as a result, I went in the uh, archives and pulled out some different uh, Bolo and Chris style swords. So I figured I'd do a real quick video on some different Bolos just to cover a little bit of, uh, of what you might see if you're at a gun show or something and you see some swords. And you want something that's kind of neat and unusual, maybe has a little bit of historical significance. So what you'll generally see are I would call tourist or import Bolos and they'll be uh, usually kind of decorative. Um, this one is not decorative at all really um, and pretty simple um, a lot of times you'll see on the scabbards you'll actually see imprinted Philippines a date something like that especially for the tourist trade this one says uh, Nigarito Bolo um, these were made mainly for tourist export so you'd go and you're at the bazaar and you'd see, I, I don't know that you could do this today. Um, we're talking <laughs> most, uh, you know, probably 50s on after World War II and, and even during World War II. I'm sure there was tourist trade bolos being made for soldiers to take back. So you'll see these. I, I don't know that you'd be able to take it back on a plane today, but they generally are pretty basic, not super ornate. Um, this one kind of looks nice. This could, in fact, not be a tourist bolo. I'm not sure. It is a little bit nicer than the tourist ones. They usually feel really flimsy, whereas this one feels like you could actually maybe actually use it for its intended hacking purpose. Bolos were common in the Philippines because they were good for both as a weapon, but also to clear vegetation. Here's another tourist trade. You can see that it's got a leather leather case with a little bit of engraving, and it's got Philippines stamped right on it. And it's clearly made with a um, modern tool set. Like you can see how it's got all kinds of sharpening or grinding marks from a modern from a modern grinder. So definitely tourist. And that's most of what you're going to see is these fake tourist ones where they're, you know, pretty obviously made on a grinding wheel or something like that. So occasionally you will stumble across one that is an authentic bolo that was probably used by a Filipino tribe. Um, this is one that my dad acquired and as you can see it's not so much ornate necessarily as very very well made. Um, it has a looks like silver actual handle up up in the front here um, and you'll see this is this is a button dangling it is a army button um, the Moros put a lot of religious significance. The Moros were the, the Muslim indigenous peoples of the Philippines, and they were always fighting with the Christian indigenous peoples. So they put special significance in the material on the base of the handle here at the hilt. Um, there was a certain religious significance to the material changes, and uh, they would carry anting anting, which is like good luck charm. So in theory, this could be a button taken off a U.S. soldier after he was killed. Um, I don't really know if that was something that may have been uh, on there when the sword came over. I have no idea that my dad found this in a um, antique shop from a dealer that he knew who said, hey, I think I have some authentic Filipino swords here. Would you be interested? So my dad, of course, uh, he's very interested in the Philippines, so he uh, picked them up. So, But this, is, like I said, I think is an actual authentic um, Moro tribe bolo sword so these these would have been used for both like i said cutting vegetation and if you were hacked with this this is a very it's got a really nice heft to it it's very well balanced this would be an awesome weapon to fight with um usually what the people would do is they would they would just charge and they would be drugged up and tied off so if you shot them they would not bleed out and they would not stop until they killed you i'll get more of that in a caliber video about the Philippines, but I thought this was interesting. This is an authentic um, Moro tribe bolo. Um, the bolo was actually so effective at clearing vegetation and such that the military saw its use during the Philippine uh, Philippine insurrection, Philippine occupation, whatever. So 
they actually came out with this is a medical core bolo um, these were issued to medical personnel to clear vegetation to chop down logs to make splints stuff like that so you'll see these and it's got the flaming bomb I mean it's ordinance marked Springfield Armory 1911 and you'll see these from time to time if you see one of these these are actually you know heavy duty you could go through a tree with this thing it's it's not going to show anywhere so if you see if you see one of these sitting in a bin or something it's cheap pick it up it's a very very cool functional piece of military surplus and this is a later 1917 bolo and these were more used as like a fighting knife um, but another US issued bolo based on the Philippine campaign and seeing how effective the bolo sword was um, for clearing vegetation hacking and you know close-up knife fighting so like I said not really a sword guy not my uh, forte if you will but definitely some neat pieces and their connection to the Philippines and history and stuff I think is fascinating so now hopefully you know a little bit more about the bolo I know that there's still some military units that still use them um, but really kind of interesting pieces and not you know I'd rather have a gun in a knife fight than a knife in a knife fight the old joke is that if you go to a knife fight uh, and you both have knives the winner dies on the way to the hospital while the loser dies right there so you know it's very hard when you're that close to avoid getting stabbed so I'm not a big knife guy I don't know that's just my personal preference but for Gun and Shot TV hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, bolos both the tourist trade ones authentic ones and then the military surplus ones and if you like this video, feel free to comment. Let me know. Like I said, I'm not a knife expert. If you got any more info on these, I'm sure people would love to hear about it. So feel free to post in the comments and leave me your feedback. Thanks for watching.